Okay, so we've got a problem here where we've got a random variable x which has a binomial distribution, so n trials, and then your probability of success is actually determined by this uniform distribution y. So it's not quite a binomial distribution, but it's related to that. And then here y is uniform, so it's the continuous uniform distribution on this interval 0 and 1. So basically what we're interested in here is, imagine you have some sort of binomial distribution, you fix this number n, and then let's have a look at what's going to happen if we randomly pick our probability p of success. And we kind of average out amongst all of these, what's the distribution of x going to be? So this kind of problem, this is quite similar to a previous video I've done on Poisson and exponential random variables where your parameter, so here your parameter p is determined by y, this random variable. And this problem relies on the same kind of trick or the same sort of approach. So let's start by looking at the probability mass function for x. So we'll just do what's the probability x equals k for some k between 0 and n. And then what we do, so just like we did with the Poisson and the exponential random variables, you can split this up into an integral where basically you look at what's the probability that x equals k and also y is in this dy, this infinitesimal region. And what we do with this then is, so a slight kind of abuse of notation, so we can write this as the integral between 0 and 1 of the probability x equals k given y equals y times by the probability y is in this dy position. And because we've got a uniform distribution on the interval 0 and 1, our probability measure here, or basically the probability density function, is just going to be equal to 1. So I can replace all of this with just dy. And then here, probability x equals x given y equals y. Well, if y is equal to the small y here, then x is binomial with parameters n, so n trials, and y is your probability of success. So this will give you n choose k. And then our probability of success is now y. So you get y to the k multiplied by 1 minus y to the n minus k. So what does that give us? This gives us the integral between 0 and 1 of n choose k y to the k, 1 minus y to the n minus k, dy. And then what I can do next is I can take out this n choose k, this doesn't depend on y, and then I'm left with an integral I need to deal with, which is y to the k, 1 minus y to the n minus k. So we integrate this with respect to y. So what do we do with this integral then? Well, this integral here, y to the k, 1 minus y to the n minus k, this is actually a very interesting special type of integral, which gives rise to something called the beta function. So if you have your beta function, so a and b, you define this function as the integral between 0 and 1, and I'll still use the variable y here, so it'd be y to the power of a minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus y, to the power of b minus 1. Integrate this with respect to y. So you can see this function here. This is basically y to the k plus 1 minus 1. This is 1 minus y to the n minus k plus 1 minus 1. So what that tells us is this whole integral is the beta function, where instead of a, we've got k plus 1. And instead of b, we've got n minus k plus 1. And how this is going to help us calculate this probability, we don't want to just leave this in terms of the beta function, but we're going to use a really nice property of the beta function, which is that beta function for a and b, you can write this in terms of the gamma function. So this is gamma a, then 
equals gamma B divided by gamma A plus B. And we also know that the gamma function of A and B, well, if A and B are integers, gamma of A is going to be A minus 1 factorial. And then similarly, you'll get a B minus 1 factorial. And then here you'll have A plus B minus 1 factorial. So now let's use this identity with our beta function to work out this integral. So we can simplify all of this here, hopefully. So now the probability x equals k, what we have is this is equal to n choose k. And then this entire integral is just beta of k plus 1 and n minus k plus 1. So we're going to multiply here by gamma of a, gamma b, gamma of a plus b. So a plus b would be k plus 1 plus n minus k plus 1. And then we'll put all of these in the factorial form. So k plus 1 minus 1 factorial gives me k factorial. And then n minus k plus 1 minus 1 factorial gives me n minus k factorial. And then in the denominator, do k plus 1 plus n minus k plus 1 minus 1, all of this stuff factorial. Okay, and then this will simplify a bit. So your k's cancel. You've got a plus one, another plus one, and a minus one. So these two ones can cancel. So this will just give you n plus one factorial in the denominator. So you get n choose k multiplied by k factorial, n minus k factorial, all divided by n plus one factorial. And then looking at this, actually, if we use the definition of n choose k in terms of factorials, you'll see hopefully lots of this is going to cancel. So n choose k is the same as n factorial divided by k factorial multiplied by n minus k factorial. So that's this term. And then you've also got a k factorial, n minus k factorial, all divided by n plus 1 factorial. So here you'll see that your k factorials cancel, n minus k factorials cancel. And actually pretty much all of the rest of this will cancel. So n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial. This is going to just give you 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so what have we shown here? We've shown that the probability that x equals k so for any k, k equals 0, k equals 1, up to k being equal to n, this is equal to 1 over n plus 1. So this doesn't even depend on k. This is interesting. But let's think, x, this is, we've started off with some sort of binomial distribution. So this can take values, integers between 0 and n. So there are n plus 1 possibilities there. And the probability of taking any of these is always 1 over n plus 1. So what that means is the distribution of x, this is actually a uniform distribution on the set 0, 1, 2, so on, all the integers up to n. So the kind of structure we're seeing here is we've started with some sort of binomial distribution, but then allowing the, the probability of success, this y here for that parameter, allowing that to be uniformly distributed what you'll see is actually the distribution of x, once you're allowing this to vary, will cancel out. Everything will sort of cancel out and you'll get a uniform distribution in the end. So, for example, if y was maybe near to a half, your binomial distribution might look something like this. But then if y was very small, near to zero, your binomial distribution might look more like this. And then if y was quite big, near to 1, your binomial distribution might look more like this. But then as you sort of average across all of these, because y can take all different values, it'll turn out that actually what you get in the end there is a uniform distribution. 
So I think that's a very nice kind of satisfying result there with your binomial and uniform distribution. So we start with a continuous uniform distribution, use that to generate a discrete binomial distribution, and in the end what we end up with is a nice discrete uniform distribution.